The one thing that these old films clearly show us is just how much life has changed. Ida Moore's film collection covering the 1930s to the 1980s is a valuable chronicle of Salisbury life and shows how much the city has been altered physically. Such changes include the sweeping away of streets and houses to make way for the new inner ring road constructed in the 1960s. David Algar, who's lived in the same house in Hulse Road since he was a boy, witnessed those changes firsthand when houses in his street were demolished to allow for the new Churchill Way. Street patterns unchanged since medieval times were suddenly gone, and it seems Salisbury would never be the same again. This street has really been my life. I've, I've always lived here. And the sad thing today is that one's neighbours seem to change with monotonous frequency. I think I worked it out one day that the average time that people live in a house today is about seven years and you constantly change and, and I don't remember that the change was as rapid uh, when I was a, a young lad. Well I'm standing here by the dual carriageway uh, just at the point where we have lost four houses, four houses that were demolished to allow this road to come through from the surviving house to my right here over to the, the shop uh, which was our local grocery shop run by the Chapman family on the corner down there. The house we're looking at here is the last house of the Edwardian Terrace and beyond that to the south there were eight more houses built as council houses in the 1930s and these are the houses that were erased to allow the road to come through. Well this is an Ordnance Survey map of 1901 which shows the northern part of Salisbury, that part which was crossed by phase one of the inner ring road, taking us from St Mark's Church. Well, there was a considerable impact on Hulse Road when the inner ring road came through. And on the east side of the street, we lost eight houses. And on the, the other side, we lost four. Not only were we, we separated from the grocery shop on one side, the two uh, confectioners, tobacconists and a greengrocer uh, were removed from the end of Castle Road around the corner. We also lost the post office and the taxi service. The people who were on, on one side of the road here were, were rehoused re by the council and on the other side the houses were in private ownership. I think there was a normal sort of wastage over a year or two, and in the end, I think very few people were compulsorily moved. It was sad in the whole areas of the city one had grown up with no longer existed. I remember going across from here, could walk directly under the railway bridge and into Castle Street without any, any impede, no underpass. It was a direct walk into the city, and that was now cut. One side of London Road had gone, one side of St Paul's Road, great chunks of Rampart Road. The, the, the whole plan of the place had changed. And some people were particularly sad that it was the first time since the layout of Salisbury in the 13th century that its checker plan had in fact been modified to some extent and it was no longer sacred. I think it was only partially successful. It caused a lot of disruption. I wonder today whether it was the right thing to do. Salisbury desperately needed a ring road, an outer ring road, which it didn't get. We had this inner ring road, which enables you to get from the, the college on the, on the south side of the city round to St Paul's. But having done that, you then run into pre-existing streets, which are really quite narrow, and what was really required well, wasn't achieved. I think one just absorbs these changes. It, it happens, you have no control over it. The pavements that one walked on as a, as a small boy, running around the corner to get sweets or going down to the shop to get something for parents, 
that just had gone. And there was now this dual carriageway there instead. 